Okay, so the next job we're going to do is assemble one side of the y-axis. Now at this point you need to determine which is going to be the front, which is going to be the back. So this is the y-axis gantry plate and this group of holes here, which the gantry is going to connect to, is going to be the back of the machine. Okay, so having determined that that's going to be the back of the machine facing that way, your ball screw, the machined end, the longest machined end with the thread on it, is going to go to the stepper motor which is going to be mounted at the back so this is the way around it goes okay so to affix the ball screw to the gantry plate there is a ball screw mounting block that just slides on like so and there's six mounting holes just here so that requires low profile five millimeter thread by 15 millimeters in length so you need six of those to mount excuse the parrots in the background we live on a tropical island and <laughs> there is drawbacks wherever you live um, so to mount the ball screw mounting block to the y-axis mounting plate okay so it's those four holes there you require four five millimeter threads and these are 14 millimeters long and these are cap head screws now you also need four linear rail bearings four linear rail bearing mounting blocks or spacers and grand total of how many is there it says 16 now these are m4s so it's four millimeter thread and they're 32 millimeters long and you require 16 of those and uh, they get mounted through these holes here okay so the first thing we're going to do is put these six these are 15 millimeter 5 mil just put these six in here just put all six in loosely with your hand first and then tighten them down so then you just get your mounting plate place over Line the holes up. Just nip them up with your fingers at the moment. Do not tighten them because when it comes to mounting the bearings on the ends of the shaft, you're going to need to move the ball screw itself to line up with the bearings so just put them in there just nip them up finger tight and uh, leave it at that okay next thing to do is to put these um, linear square rail blocks on uh, it has a like a, a, a dust shield and keeper that keeps all the balls uh, in the bearing so what you need to do is just start the bearing on the end 
like so and feed it on okay just be very careful don't pull just pull this out of the bearing because you'll find that you may lose one of the balls Okay, so just get two of the screws, these are 32 millimeters long, put two in, put a spacer on, Leave them slack. You need to keep it slack like this for when you want to put the gantry on. So it's a little fiddly, but uh, I prefer to do it this way. What I like to do then is this is the front of the machine, and because we're going to be working on the gantry shortly, um, I'm going to wind this all the way to the front. It makes, just makes it easier for me to work on, you know, on the gantry. So having assembled your one side of your y-axis, uh, and I've run the y-axis uh, come gantry side plate all the way down the, the front end of the machine because um, it's easier for me to uh, assemble the gantry onto the gantry side plates from the front of the machine. Um, what I'm going to do is, or what I've done, is so you don't put any strain on the, uh, the ball nut or the axes itself because uh, this is quite heavy, uh, I've just put a wooden block here for a moment just to take the weight while I get the uh, rear end uh, axis plate which holds the bearing uh, and the way that this needs to be put in is you'll notice that the bearing is flush one side and there is a circlip and it's uh, set in this side. This faces towards the, in this case, the stepper motor. So we're just going to, if I just move that block out the way, I need three hands here. Move that out the way, put that bearing in, bring this up, and I'm just going to get a couple of screws just to hold this uh, plating in place and these are five millimeter by 20s oh, let's try and find a hole here and we'll just screw. only you know you only need to put them in sort of fairly slack one one in each corner here now there are several there are three different types of screws that go in here uh, there's six cap head screws that go in here uh, and there's uh, two cap head screws that go in these two. Uh, now I am not putting the 
uh, other end plate on because um, the next job we need to do is insert these 20 by 40 stiffness. Okay, so at this point I found it's the best idea to put the uh, stiffeners into the Y axis and just slide them in, they're a very good fit. One. And two. So now you need to insert six M5 T nuts, three in the lower and three in the upper. Sighting through the hole, you can get a, a flat bladed screwdriver and just push it through until you line the holes up and you can put a screw straight in. Okay, I've just found two minor things um, which probably could be a little better. Um, the first one being that they've supplied um, 5 by 16 millimeter uh, cap head screws to attach to this bottom um, chassis member cross beam and these are 12 millimeter plates which leaves not very much thread hanging out uh, and what I found I've had to do is um, these little T nuts I've had to turn backwards okay so well what appears to be backwards in my terminology anyway um, so that the protruded center faces out uh, and it is it is not quite flush with this material so uh, you, you know and, and I've, I've had to change them all over at the other end because uh, you know otherwise there's only about one millimeter of thread <laughs> that it grabs um, and this way around you know it, uh, it, it'll it'll go into about um, well, probably three and a half to nearly four you know millimeters so that gives you sort of full penetration of thread uh, into the into the nut but my terminology doesn't seem right uh, but turning the nut backwards like that so you have this uh, protrusion facing towards the material that you're screwing to it um, sort of gives it a hundred percent fixture uh, and that the nut itself isn't uh, coming into contact with you know the back of this plate which is what I was worried about I suppose uh, I may be nitpicking there <laughs> uh, of course I could be could be wrong about the way these little T nuts are designed uh, this may be the correct way to put them in I'm I'm really not sure about that but what I am sure about is that the insert stiffener should be less than or at least exactly flush with the end of this C rail and what I found um, on both sides is that this stiffener is actually protruding past the um, the C rail by quite a considerable amount actually so let's have a look here by 0.68 of a millimeter which means if you you know you tighten all these screws up 
this uh, plate is going to tend to want to pull around like this. You know, I, I don't want to split hairs or anything like that because I, you know, I like the machine, but you know, this should be flush. All right, so I'm going to have to take remove the, both of these now, and I'm going to have to uh, get them on my. Uh, big sander over there and just just sand off the the end just that 0.6 of a millimeter to to get it to to um, fit flush on here I mean it it would be preferable to be a little bit less than being protruded out but you know it's easy fixed we've taken a bit off that end And you can see now that that is absolutely flush. That's how it should be. So it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a sander, you know, take it off as square as you can. And, you know, it'll come out all right. So when you've tightened up all your screws, it's then necessary to put the circlip on, like so. Circlip pliers are probably the best, but uh, if you have some very fine nosed, pointy nosed pliers, you can manage with that. <laughs> 